Hi everyone, and welcome back. So, as many of you probably know, with the community section on my channel, I am going to try to wrap up the British Raj after the attempt of overthrowing Britain in the 1850s. Now, what really caused the mutiny, as stated before, really was this cultural division, especially as Britain was removing a lot of regional leaders and tried to replace a lot of the succession of regional leaders and basically trying to harden a lot of the racial views and alongside that removing a lot of native peoples of India from really rising in the British bureaucracy placing a lot of them into roles more of servants and alongside that uh well a lot of British commanders because of the lack of European women in India took on a lot of mistresses from India, which caused a lot of concerns with venereal diseases, and as India started, in a lot of ways, trying to create their own sense of European and native royals, they also tried to create a basically somewhere between a conservative and liberal despotism or a monarchy within a monarchy or empire within an empire. And after the mutiny of 1857 and 1858, um, there had to be several reforms and projections of power. Alongside that, um, this push of fully putting India into the empire also went along with uh, making Queen Victoria, a symbolic ruler, an empress within the empire. And, and alongside that, um, male suffrage, and um, trying to basically reform India with male suffrage, and at least bringing up talks of women's education. And, and basically they wanted reforms without touching the issues of racism in the bureaucracy of the colonial empire. And this lack of movement on the racial issue really will be what kind of makes um, the attempts of reforms in the between World War period kind of a non-starter because a lot of the moves of for India independence at least tried to address the racial issues within the imperial bureaucracy before that moment. And, and as we do enter the World War period, we kind of need to take a step back and see the whole empire. Now, we're jumping a huge period of time, but we kind of need to do a fast track to the world wars and kind of see the whole empire and and then see India with it. By this time of the second empire, basically Germany was forming the political situation that 
basically gave Britain a free hand in making a colonial empire was gone. The caution and attempt of keeping a balance of power in Europe was gone. A lot of empires were scrambling to lay claim in Africa, trying trying to basically create their own spheres of influence. And alongside that, Britain always was aware it was overstretched and that they had more to gain in creating beachheads and projecting and expanding power that way. And and while that may seem a weird concept, they they kind of knew that massively overhauling any one place was going to overstretch their limited resources and manpower. So they had more to gain in trying to work within different ruling methods and projections of power. And in a lot of ways, we do see that with India in trying to blend liberal despotism with and or hardening already pre-existing concepts like the caste system, but hardening it and enforcing it more than existed before. As we get to the World Wars, India's main role was basically be a center for raw resource production and recruitment and arms production and a bureaucratic center of power, which meant that uh, India's bureaucracy and basically the pre-existing regional balance, especially with the promotion of the Punjabs, basically had to give way into a centralization. And because that, there were pushes between the wars for self-rule. And with it, we see the rise of Gandhi and the India Congress. And but alongside that, there was also a push for creation of Pakistan for the Muslims of that made up a good chunk of the Northern British Raj. And this created division that obviously we still see today, but it also created division within the push for, if not home rule, India independence. And with with the rise of mutinies and massive famines, especially during the Second World War, we have a cry for independence and the vice royalty of Lord Montbatten. What Lord Montbatten really kind of understood, even as he tried to see if there was any way to avoid avoid independence, he did understand that the time of the British Raj was over. Britain, by the end of World War II, was overtaxed and would continue to had have a ration system even a few years after World War II. But because of the lack of resources and being forced to and with it also giving into the creation of Pakistan, 
they rushed the effort of a partition based on religious and ethnic grounds, which is kind of why, especially where the, with Punjab and the Sikhs, we have this tension around the border between Pakistan and India and even Bangladesh to this day because this partition was rushed and really and really the the rise of India from the Raj and the partition itself was something that was done in months and and by enforcing racial barriers, religious barriers, and creating definitions of caste to a degree that didn't really exist before the British Raj, we do see a lot of tension in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh from from this period of the British Raj. So what do we really take from all this? Well, India, even during the early days of the British, the British company period, what we see is the view of India as a place of resource production, if not finished goods. And with it, we have this level of fascination, and even to a certain extent, the British viewing India from a view of something where they could live out a medieval fantasy. And try to redefine a culture to fit their definition and create their own view of nobility, chivalry, and also definitions of sexuality and and power. And with it, they also wanted to create their own definition of what a liberal despot or a liberal rule within an empire of an empire could be. And by the 1850s with the mutinies, with a, with the end of the company period and the taking over of the empire, we see we see India still being to a certain degree a place where the British could be both rich and still try to create a Britain Britain with within India, which unfortunately meant meant yes, you see reforms like male and male suffrage and at least talks of and some implementation of reforms for women, but it was still within a definition of culture and sexism that to to some degree, yes, did exist in India, but not to the degree as it was before. So, so in a lot of ways, the British Raj is complicated, and even this overview probably fails to capture it because the British Raj is fascinating in how it blends cultures, but also, in a lot of ways, kind of questioning. Where do we go from here? Because homosexuality existed in India and did exist during the British Raj period. But because of Britain's views of sodomy, um, we have to deal with 
the fact that India, until recently, criminalized homosexuality and questioned whether or not gay marriage could exist. Pakistan is famous for having an underground gay movement, but but publicly still is not a kind place for people of different sexualities. And so that really does kind of make you question the consequences of forcing your views onto a culture that may match some of the things you expect, but it's complicated. I'll have a good one.